Hey everyone, Laszlo Montgomery again. This is the Chinese Sayings Podcast. And do I ever have a good one for you today? Man ting ruo shi. A cheng yu that comes straight out of the Zhan Guo Ci, the Annals of the Warring States. That was written during the Western Han, so it's pretty reliable. Warring States period of the Eastern Zhou lasted 490 to 221 BC. Roughly the passing of Confucius to the unification of China by Qin Shi Huang. The Western Han was established in 202 BC, so the Annals of the Warring States is a pretty reliable record, filled with colorful anecdotes, mainly concerning political strategy. But before we get to the story, let's break Munting Ruo Shi down into its constituent parts. A Mun is a door or an entrance, and a Ting is a front courtyard or front yard. Ruo means as if or like. And the final character, shi, means a uh, market or marketplace. It also means a city, but in this case, it means a market. Door, courtyard, as if a market. Eh, I think we could make a sound, educated guess about the meaning behind these four characters. But let's not leave ourselves guessing, and let's go find out for sure. The tale behind Mun Ting Ruo Shi. It takes place in the state of Qi during the time of their great king Wei, Qi Wei Wang. He ruled from 356 to 320 BC and was the first ruler of this powerful state to call himself a king rather than a duke or some other title. Now, you all might recall Qi, located in Shandong province, was the last of the warring states to fall to Qin. King Wei of Qi... He reigned concurrently with Duke Xiao of Qin. And all fans of the Qin Empire miniseries, Da Qin Di Guo, you know Duke Xiao. He was the ruler who recruited Xiangyang to the Qin side. Anyway, the star of our tale, oh, he was one heck of a shuai ge. The Zhan Guo Ci, the Annals of the Warring States, refers to our hero as a Mei Nan Ci, a beautiful man. Well... Let's just say he was, he was handsome, and his name was Zhou Ji, and he came from Qi State. So one day, as Zhou Ji was checking himself out in the mayor, liking what he saw, as always, he knew he turned heads around town, but he couldn't help obsessing about this one other good-looking guy named Mr. Xu, Xu Gong. Now, he himself had heard folks around town often remarking on Mr. Xu's dapper good looks. And as Zhou Ji gazed at his reflection, he wondered, who was more attractive and handsome, himself or Mr. Xu? So he went back to his wife and he asked her, Dear, who do you think is better looking, me or Mr. Xu? His wife replied without hesitation, Mr. Xu? Oh, he's nothing compared to you. Nobody in their right mind would ever choose Xu Gong over you. But his wife's endorsement wasn't enough for Zhou Ji, so... The next day, he went to his concubine and asked the same question, to which she replied timidly, Oh, how can Mr. Xu hope to compare with you? You're, you're much better looking. Well, the next day, Zhou Ji, yeah, he still had these nagging doubts. So he had a friend over for dinner. And over the meal, Zhou Ji put the same question to his companion. Now, his friend, who happened to need Zhou Ji's help with something, well, he replied with a smile, Ha, Lao Zhou! You're a much more attractive man than Mr. Xu. Well, although his wife, concubine, and friend had all told him that he was far more handsome than Mr. Xu, Zhou Ji didn't entirely believe them, and he remained suspicious of their remarks. Well, as it happened, the next day, Mr. Xu himself came to visit, and Zhou Ji had the chance to really get a good look at him. And as they sat together chatting, Zhou Ji studied every square inch of Mr. Xu's face and couldn't help but feel that this Mr. Xu was far more handsome than he was. So after Mr. Xu left, Zhou Ji went to the mirror and once again surveyed himself thoroughly, comparing every feature of his body with what was fresh in his mind from this encounter with Mr. Xu. And the more he thought about it, the more certain he became that Mr. Xu was by far the better looking of the two, and he was not happy. And that night, Zhou Ji, eh, he couldn't sleep, and his mind kept Returning to the same question, if Mr. Xu was clearly more handsome, why had three people told him otherwise? Well, after much contemplation, fulmination, and reflection, 
it dawned on Zhou Ji. His wife had told him he was more handsome because, well, she was biased towards him. And his concubine had told him he was the more attractive one because, well, she was afraid of him. And his friend well, told him he was more handsome because Zhou Ji knew he wanted something from him. So from this incident, Zhou Ji drew a profound conclusion. If a nobody like him received all this flattery, imagine what it must be like for the ruler of a country. He'd be surrounded by even more flatterers than himself, and thus would be even more vulnerable to false counsel. So the very next day, Zhou Ji went to the Qi court in Linzi. He told his story to King Wei of Qi, and he concluded his time with King Wei by imploring him, for the good of the state, to place more value on the criticisms from his officials and from the people, and to pay less heed to the endless stream of compliments from all these flatterers who secretly wanted something from him. And King Wei, he saw the value of Zhou Ji's words and promptly issued a decree saying, From this day forth, he who dares to criticize my actions to my face will be rewarded highly. He who dares to criticize my actions via letter will be rewarded moderately. And he who criticizes me behind my back, but whose opinion reaches my ears, will receive a smaller reward. And these measures shall apply no matter whether the dissenter is a commoner or a courtier. And after this incident, wouldn't you know, so many people, commoners and courtiers alike, ran to the Qi royal court to issue their criticisms. King Wei's front gate and courtyard became as crowded as a marketplace on market day. That's right. Right here in the Chan Guozi, it states that so crowded was the entrance to the royal palace with people wishing to petition or criticize the king. The Mun Ting, the courtyard to the entryway, was raw, sure, like a marketplace, which, yeah, usually quite bustling. And as just a follow-up to the story, as the uh, chapter covering Qi State from the Annals of the Warring States goes, so many people came forward to express their criticisms and complaints to King Wei, and so valid were many of the criticisms. Well, they were taken into consideration by the Qi court and implemented throughout the land. And because of this, the crowds became smaller and smaller, month by month, and after a year, and not a single complainant could be found at the palace gates. Because King Wei had implemented so many of these reforms with such great success, there was nothing left anyone could point to that needed reforming. And under King Wei's wise and humble rule, no, the kingdom of Qi grew in prosperity and strength day by day. Emissaries from far and wide came to pay their respects. The kingdom of Yen, Zhao, Han, and Wei, they all sent representatives. And because of this incident, King Wei of Qi was remembered in history as a ruler who scored victories without even using force. Man Ting Ruo Shi, literally, Doors and courtyards like a marketplace. You could use this to describe any situation where there are an abundance of guests or visitors at a place. Some of you remember from Season 4, Episode 8, Man Ke Luo Chue. So few were the number of guests at the residence of Lord Jai. One could catch sparrows in the front entryway with a net. So that's sort of the opposite of Man Ting Ruo Shi. Oh, and uh, one more thing. Do you remember Lord Meng Chang from Season 1, Episode 7? Ji Ming Go Dao. Well, King Wei, well, he was his grandfather. Just saying. Lord Meng Chang, he was the one with the huge entourage. Okay, enough of these factoids. I doubt that one will ever make it to Jeopardy. So let's wind things up here. Man Ting Ruo Shi. When some places are so crowded that nobody goes there anymore. Well, this is a good one to use. Man Ting Ruo Shi. Keep that one in your utility belt. You never know. All right. Thanks for listening, everyone. On behalf of Emma at the spacious Changyu Yenjiu Zhongxin and ourselves, this is Laszlo Montgomery signing off from Los Angeles, California. Hey, come visit June, July 2026. we got the World Cup coming to our fair city. That's not a paid endorsement from FIFA. So take care, everyone, and I look forward to speaking with you again next time for another enlightening episode of the Chinese Sayings Podcast.